It's hot. Earlier this year, around April or May-ish, the stories were like wildfire. Kim Jong-un, despot leader of, uh, of North Korea, was dead or a vegetable or in a coma or dying from a heart failure. At least that's what major news media all over the Western world was saying. But only one very small, small problem. He's totally fine. He was hanging out with his harem of hundreds of Korean women. He's totally, he's good. If anything, he's probably better than ever somehow. And yet, I, I was left with a question. You see, all of these sites cited a Japanese news source, a Japanese newspaper, a Japanese magazine, something. And all of them just linked to each other. They linked to another news site, to another news site, to another news site, until they all eventually linked to a, a notoriously sketchy news site. Journalism is dead, everybody. Journalism is dead. And it left us, the people that can actually read the Japanese news and, and we watch it on television, we have it on our phones, or those of us with access to newspapers. It left all of us incredibly confused because it was citing Japanese news sources, plural, and it was radio silence. There was nothing in any of the papers that I read, nothing on the sites that I knew about, that said anything about this. If you guys would like to avoid this in the future, sharing fake news on Facebook, I know it's the controversial term right now, that's why I'm making this video and you should stay tuned. <music> Journalism is dead and I'm not gonna be the one to save it. But if you guys are an independent researcher and you're trying to figure out if this news story that you're reading about should be trustworthy, if you're trying to find cross-reference sites that are trustworthy, at least to the Japanese people. Maybe you're a language learner and you're just, you're scared you're gonna get the, I don't know, the Alex Jones Express, right? Well, then this video is for you because if you're not from Japan, if you're not familiar with their newspapers, how can you tell the difference from a New York Times and a Weekly World News? It, it's hard. So I'm not blaming independent small media or people that got duped on Facebook, I get it. Uh, I am blaming major Western news networks that apparently don't have the money to hire one Japanese person to tell them that that thing wasn't trustworthy. But that's a whole different thing. Those people aren't gonna watch this video. They don't want journalism, they want clicks. If you guys are here to try and just sift through the craziness that is, or at least what seems, like Japanese media, uh, I have compiled some info for you. Now these are not my thoughts, my opinions. Uh, I actually got five friends together on a Zoom call, uh, ages 20 to about 45. I'm gonna be very kind on that one. Hopefully she doesn't see this. So young and old, uh, I made sure that these people were as close to a spectrum as I could reasonably get, as well as trying to get a spectrum of the actual news they consume. And I took all the fringes out and I only kept in here some rules and some guidelines that they suggested if you guys are wanting to partake in Japanese news. So today's video, I was gonna have this big sign with me, wherever the hell I was gonna put it, uh, but I kept getting glare and I couldn't do it right. It's this thing, right? So this was my sign, but I'll, I'll just, I'll throw it up somewhere. I'll also put the rules down in the description down below if you guys want to, to use them to figure them out yourself. So I will not be explaining or dissecting the whole of Japanese news media. I'm not making exhaustive lists because there's just too much, there's too many sites. Uh, and things change, right? One year, there might be a really reputable source, but you know, five, 10 years from then, it might turn into a gossip mag. So instead of me just having a list of this good, this bad, uh, I'm just gonna give you guys some very general rules, some guidelines, kind of like a safety net area, that if you stay within this safety net, you should be okay. And if you decide to go outside the safety net, you at least understand why you would wanna go outside of that. So let's jump right into the triangle of temporary trust. Now, as you can see, this kind of scales up and down uh, near the top. There's very few news agencies up there because those are widely trusted uh, from people all over Japan, all over the age demographics, all over the political demographics. These are generally trustworthy organizations. And so they're at the top of the pyramid because, you know, there's not a lot of them. Now, it's pretty polarizing to compare this to things in the West right now, I understand, but I'm just trying to give you guys kind of a, a touchstone so these are like your Fox, your CNNs, your NBCs. I'm not saying they're unbiased. I'm not saying they're the, the second coming of Jesus when it comes to unbiased commentary in the news. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that these are, are widely trusted. The companies up here uh, typically have multiple different hubs, different studios, different platforms even. So they have websites, newspapers, uh, magazines, TV shows, YouTube channels. Just that they're, they're big enough that there should be 
some sort of bubble up effect. Now, what do I mean by bubble up effect? Bubble up, bubble up, bubble up effect. Bubble wob effect. So a bubble up effect is something that I recommend to you guys if you catch something lower on this pyramid. And it's, it kind of stems from common sense. So if you catch something in the sketchier sides down here, then how can you decide? Like maybe these guys just got the first scoop. It doesn't mean it's inherently wrong, but it's not yet present up there. I would advise you caution and wait because if it is true and if it's a big deal, like I don't know, a world despot dying, especially one that's neighbors with Japan, right? If that's the case, it will eventually bubble up to those big news sites. But if it's radio silence up here, it should be radio silence right here, right? Zip your lip. You don't need to be posting about it right now. You don't need to be reporting about it. Wait for it to get up there. So some good examples of these are like uh, Asahi or NHK, Nihon Keizai. And I'll leave links for all of these sites down below. These are not my picks of these. Actually, I asked everyone their examples in each of these groups that they gave me. And these were the general consensus ones. These are the ones that all of them, every single member of that group, agreed that these are generally considered trustworthy sources. Now, there are other ones that are outside of this that maybe four of them agreed with and one of them didn't, so I didn't put it on there. But you guys can explore these on your own. In order for something to be up kind of on this tier, Typically, they have to have an international presence. Now, going slightly down on this list, this is still a pretty safe place to draw from. These are your regional news sources. Now, what do I mean by regional sources? So Japan typically has broader regions, right? They have the Kansai region, the Tohoku region. Kyushu is like the whole island, right? These kind of broad strokes of areas that have multiple different offices and still also have maybe their own local TV channel, website, newspaper. It's just not an international entity. It's kind of a regional within Japan entity. Some examples that were given to me were like the Nishi Nippon, like the West Japan paper, the Minami Nippon, the you know South Japanese paper, right? So these kind of regional ones, right? Because these have multiple offices. If one office messes up, they usually have other offices to kind of help them cite their sources or to not just put stuff out that's super clickbaity. Again, these are general statements. So we're getting lower down on the broadness of the wideness of the trust, but these generally are considered still trustworthy. And if you can see on the chart, I have a thing called the high water mark of trust. The high water mark of trust is only there to let you guys know that if you are citing above this line, you're generally safe. These are peer reviewed. These are cited, uh, sourced, usually uh, from first person, right? These are not, well, my friend said this, or this other regional newspaper said this. These tend to be first-person sources. And they are generally trusted, generally reliable. Most Japanese people, at least the ones that I've spoken to to compile this list, agree that these are safe. But now we get the fun. If this was an iceberg instead of a pyramid, we're getting below the water. Now, I gotta preface this, these are not bad sources. Independent news media is a good thing, right? It's just, they're getting less and less widespread trust, and thus you should also trust these a little bit less uh, until they bubble up, right? Anything below this line, I would argue you should wait till the stories bubble up above the line. If you're gonna cite it on your crazy political Facebook post, right? Or if you're a journalist and you're gonna cite them, wait for it to bubble up. Now this is a huge section you're gonna see in your family marts, in your 7-Elevens, your, your regular convenience stores all over Japan, as well as train stations, uh, sometimes left on bus stops from my experience. Uh, these are your weekly news magazines. Now again, not untrustworthy, but in case you guys were wondering, the site that all those people were asking about, the, the thing that everyone's like, oh yeah, this Japanese source said it, it was a magazine, first off, that's your first issue. And secondly, it was a weekly. The less and less that something posts, the less and less, for whatever reason, this Japanese panel agreed, it was trustworthy. Again, it's not that all stories in these are wrong, it's just if you're going to cite it, wait for it to bubble up. These are also your TMZs, your gossip mags, your celebrity mags, even your train aficionado, right? All of this typically is in that weekly, bi-weekly, or even monthly range and just wait, especially since most of these are not regional, they tend to be pretty localized. They either maybe don't have a place that you can actually go and hold them responsible. There's not a lot of updating the information that happens week to week, month to month. So there's just not a lot of accountability and you could tell as we're getting down, the trust drops significantly. Now this last section is obviously the biggest because it contains probably the most bulk of news and also the most bulk of kind of BS solely online sources. Because anyone can set up a free Wix website and post whatever the hell they want. You generally do not want to trust a source that is 100% online. I could not find a physical copy of the, whatever, the iSky24, whoever cited that Japanese source to say that Kim Jong-un was in a vegetative state. Because it's an online source in the West. And I think it's pretty 
general common sense, but if it's only online, there's no physical building, there's no physical address, it's just, it could be whatever, you know? And that's not exactly gonna garner a whole lot of trust. And if you followed these rules, and you could see that this can go anywhere from a C, right? Like, it doesn't have to be wrong, usually to an F, completely fake. And that's what happened with Kim Jong-un and this whole crazy story. People took it from the bottom of the pyramid before they waited for it to bubble up. And since it never did bubble up, it wasn't real. It wasn't covered by any of the major news networks, any of the regional news networks. There's just so much wrong with that story that it really shouldn't have even made it outside of that one weekly magazine, and yet it blew up to where the New York Post was covering it. It's crazy to think about, but with these principles, these basic things, you guys can also be safe. Now, I will say one last thing when it comes to this bottom. This also includes, you know, curated Twitter and Facebook uh, news things in Japanese, but there is one section that all the people weirdly trusted, so I just kind of separate it and made it its own thing. Line. Line news. Uh, I don't use it. I've never used it. But they were really hesitant to trust Facebook and Twitter news and all these other random social media newses. But they all, all five trusted Line. So, I guess take that for what it is. Maybe you guys would want to trust Line too. Maybe you don't. But they all trusted it, so that's 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 why that's there. So like I said, I will leave links to all the trustworthy ones that they told you guys about in the description down below. Be careful. Be cautious. Be critical. Critical thinkers, guys. But yeah, if you guys like this video, be sure to like it down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments, you can leave them in the comment box down below. I do personally read all of them. If you are someone that has experience with Japanese news, you watch the news maybe on your TV like I do, you have hundreds of newspapers sitting around your house, which I also happen to have. You're just someone that likes Japanese news for whatever reason. Maybe you're a casual reader, maybe you really enjoy it. Any and all, if you guys have your suggestions for kind of trustworthy sources that you use, please put them in the comment box down below. Let's help people in the future coming to this video Go down there, see what's going on. Maybe they can find some some trustworthy sources. You can catch me Twitch TV forward slash Chad Zimmerman uh, at that's my Chad on Twitter. Chad Zimmerman probably on most all other platforms. If you guys subscribe, you will get a special subscriber only outro at the very end of this video. And if you are not subscribed, you're not allowed to watch it. It'll just be a black screen. You can't see it. Your eyes will not adjust. But the minute you hit that subscribe button your eyes will appear and you'll see whatever cool special magic I have at the end of my videos every single week. So for you non-subscribers, thank you for watching. Here's your regular outro, and I will see you guys at the special subscriber only outro. Love hard, love deep, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye. And we're back. It is like a thousand degrees in here and I am sick I got tested for corona, I got the blood test and the, the horrible brain, Egypt mummy pulling out your, your brain noodle thing. Uh, negative on all counts, so I probably am just fighting off a flu. You can tell by the bags under my eyes and the sweat from the July heat. Oh my god, it's so hot. But I'm still here for you, subscriber only outro. Uh, this week, well, I'm just, we're, uh, I'm gonna give you a tour of my succulents. Thanks for subscribing, uh, and I'll catch you guys next week. Bye bye <laughs>